Hello everyone. Suppose you are managing a particular project and you are tracking project milestones, objectives and with help of all this you want to ensure quality standards then creating a traceability matrix is the best option for you. Moreover, a traceability matrix is also utilized in software development, healthcare industry and supply chain management for better accountability and consistency in every domain. So this is Jihad Riyanji from Excel Demi and today we'll learn several steps on how to create a traceability matrix in Excel. So the first question occurs, what is a traceability matrix? A traceability matrix is a representation of a correlative document that considers or correlates any two documents depending on their many-to-many -many comparable relationship. A traceability matrix establishes forward, backward or bidirectional relationships among its fields and checks whether the requirements are addressed or not. By doing that, it ensures the fulfillment of those asked questions. Before going into the steps, let's talk about the dataset a bit. Here we have the project name and the name of the project manager in the B4 and B5 cell. Now we have the step ID, requirement, required objective, requested by project status and test status in column B, C, D, E, F and G. Now we want to create a traceability matrix similar to the matrix showing on the screen. We'll be using Microsoft Excel 365 for this whole tutorial. So without any further discussion, let's get started. The first step of creating traceability matrix is to create the proper requirement here. Now we'll go for the column C where we have already set the proper heading of requirement. Now we'll go for C8 and insert our first requirement description which is in this case login page. Now we'll enter our second description which is in this case forgot password link. So write down forward password link manually. Now we'll do the same for the rest of the column. After fulfilling every cell the requirement column will look like this. Now we need to define requirement objective to restrict project outcomes. Here we have got the requirement objective in column D. So at first we need to go for the D8 cell and insert the first requirement objective here which is in this case the login page requirement and the objective is the users need to able to access paid contents. So we need to write it down manually which is users able to access paid contents. So we have got our first requirement objective here. Next we need to again go for the D9 cell and insert our second required objective for the forgot password link. In this case the description will be able to provide password rest option. So we'll again write down here able to provide password reset option. So we have got our two description here. We need to do the same for the rest of the section also. After fulfilling the whole section, the requirement objective will look like this. We also need to specify requirements priority to create traceability matrix. Here we have got the column E which is set by the requested by section. Here we'll got the requested by section by which we'll resolve the issue of which section must be given more priority and which is less priority. At first in the E8 cell we'll write down our first requested by section which is proprietor. So we'll write down and press the enter button. After that we'll go for our next section and write down the same section again as it is again selected by the proprietor. Now the third data is provided by the company MD. So now we'll write down the company MD here. This section must be given the highest priority in the list of the section. After fulfilling the whole section, the requested by section will look like this. 
this portion is very important as this portion will be very much useful in case of higher productivity after setting requirements and objective details you need to keep track of the project progress along with proper documentation to do that we have got the project status in the column f where you need to go for the project section manually You'll select the cells of f8 to f13 go for home tab and in the number section we'll make the percentage section now we have got the percentage here you can easily go in the F8 cell and insert the project status. Suppose you have got the 100%, so write down 100% manually and press the enter button. Next, we'll again write down the value, which is in this case 70, then you have got 45, then you have got 40, and next you have got 20 and 10 section. So now you have got the project status. Suppose you don't want to show the decimal numbers. So select the cells of F8 to F13. Go for home tab and the number section you have got the decrease decimal. If you select the decrease decimal then it will decrease the decimal numbers. You will see that we need our proper documentation here. And to do that we need to go in our test cases worksheet. In this worksheet, you will see we have got the proper test documentation here. Here, we have got the documentation of how we got the proper numbers in this case. So, we need to link our traceability matrix within that. To do that, we'll see that we'll go for our first value, which is in this case the F8 to F13 cell. Now, go for the insert tab, and here you'll find the linking option. Select the insert link to get the hyperlink here. After that, you'll get your perfect documentation. Now select the place in this document and select the test cases where you have got the values of H7 in this section of the project status. Click OK. Then you'll see that your project have been linked here. If you click on it, then it will take you to the worksheet of the test cases. So that's how you can easily got the project status manually and link them along with the proper documentation. By the help of the project status, we need to take a decision and show it manually in the test status. Suppose the project status is in between 50 to 80 then it will show the partially passed section if it is above 80 percent then it will show passed completely otherwise if it is less than 50 then it will show the failed option we can manually write it down here it is 100 percent in the f8 cell so we can easily write down the pass section here now, next, it is 70% as it is in between 50 to 80, so we can manually again write down the partially passed. So, we'll write down partial here. So, that's how we can manually put and insert every section. But now, we want to be smart. We want to do something very special. So, we can easily do the same thing by using the if function here. We'll go for the G8 cell and insert the if condition, which shows whether the condition is met or not. In this section, we'll go for our first cell F8 must be less than 0.5. So write down it and if it fulfills this section, then we'll go for our showing result which is in the value if true section and now we want to show the failed here in the status. So write down it but if it doesn't fulfill the condition, then it will go for another if condition which is in this case the F8 must be less than or equal to 80% that means 0.8 after that if it fulfills both the condition then it will show the past but if it fulfills one condition then it will show only the partial so if it fulfills one condition then it will show the partial here so write down partial in this section but if it fulfills both the section then it will show the past in section so write down past here and now the double quotation to end the status if we click the enter button then get a perfect result now drag down the formula to show it to every cell so that's how we can easily set the test status with the help of if function also 
the most crucial part of a traceability matrix is to verify the final product with asked requirements. So it needs to be tested properly. So we need to link them with the proper result of the test cases. You can see in the test cases worksheet, we have got the result in the column I. So we need to link it down along with our traceability matrix. So at first we'll select the values of G8 to G13, go for the insert tab and in the link section go for the insert link now in the insert link section you have got the insert hyperlink select the place in this document go for the test cases and now we need to link it down along with the i7 so select it and click ok now you have linked the values here if you click on the g8 of the traceability matrix then it will take you to the proper documentation here so that's how we can easily create the linking function also here are some important notes about creating traceability matrix while creating traceability matrix you need to keep the matrix operational and workable and avoid unnecessary documentation also you need to remove expiry documents from links and citations you should only maintain one traceability matrix for one certain project and arrange columns or fields in a way so that it has a clear description and compressibility. So that's it for today. You can follow these steps accordingly or you can download the practice workbook from the link below. Hope this will help you. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, please let us know in the comment section. Or you can have a glance at xlm.com. Thanks for watching us. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this.